So, um, really quick, I want to ask this question, Keith, uh, before we really get into the meat of this story is, at this point of your life, do you think or believe that you have an attachment from the Bothell House? Uh, most definitely, yeah. I'm, I'm 200% sure of that, yeah. And most I'm going to agree that. with you. I'm going to agree with you. And the reason I'm going to agree with you is because I listened to our last radio show. And the last show that you were on with us, I heard right before you would speak about four times on the show, I would hear something try to speak right before you that was present yep. with you. And I'm like, I had to keep replaying it and replay. I'm like, wait a second. It's trying to talk. And I said, this guy has to have an attachment. So there it is. And now what we know why the second book came out. I mean, you know, you've been through a lot. You have an amazing story. All of them open up and down. There's no, there's no way that could be. I left the cabinet door open. That's it. That's it. What was that? That's it. It does not like cameras. I'm, I'm telling you that. That's it. Recommended a report. They caught uh, EVPs that had Irish accents, and they were Irish accent EVPs. And Irish were pr uh, prominent throughout Bothell in the 1800s. A lot of the wall writings were written in Native American language, the Upside Down Man. Yeah. Some of the EVPs referenced that. Some of the EVPs referenced the word long house, which is a, uh, a Native American term. Um, so they got a lot of stuff. Uh, the the classification that they wrote down in their report was uh, LIH, a localized intelligent haunting slash poltergeist. But Steve Merrill, like I said, he said, there's evidence here. There's definitely poltergeist activity in, in this house. Keith Linder, uh, for the time him and Tina lived here, from the phenomena we witnessed and seen, these are typical poltergeist-related um, activity. You, you just see that. He said, what makes this case extremely unusual, and this is his words, not mine, is some of the other elements mixed in with that. Right. You know? And it's just sort of, you can, you can, it, it, it makes it hard for a researcher to come to a conclusion because what we know about Portuguese cases, the, the belief is now, and even Stephen Merz said that, that might be wrong, is there has to be an agent. It's usually a focal person that the activity is centering around. Well, or, or a relationship. Or a relationship. Yeah. Said, there's no dysfunction in the house. Um, we know the activity was here when Kitchatina got here because, you know, Rhonda. We know that the activity can happen outside of the home. Keith has been on business trips. He's been attacked. Uh, Tina's been attacked uh, away from the house. He's, he's had phenomena happen away from the house. 
neither one has had phenomena prior to moving into this house. Um, they weren't playing with any Ouija board or anything, so they didn't walk in with it with them. Um, the only thing we, we can point to the land, some of the things points to the land being related, but we've interviewed the houses next door and the houses next door to them and the houses next door to them, and nobody's reporting activity in their, in their, in their establishments. So that kind of th doesn't necessarily throw it out the window. It just makes you sort of lay it down for as to being the land. But it could be a, a combination of a lot of different things. Now, um, book one, the Bothell Hell House, book one, uh, I tell the story from 2012 to 2016 of what happened through in that four-year period. Uh, book two, Attachments, Portuguese uh, of Washington State, part two, picks up where Stephen Dawn uh, left off because they come back. There's a, there's a coming back uh, second right. uh, trip as a result of the activity resurfacing. All right, everybody, this is an impromptu quick recording for you guys this morning. I wanted to do an update. This may not be the best quality. I'm sitting here with my cell phone recording this on my Podbean app. And I became aware yesterday, late last night, after releasing the podcast, that at the one hour and one minute mark, the sound on the podcast just disappears. Now, when I was going through the raw file of that podcast recording and editing it, there was no missing sound in that last 12 minutes. So it goes from about one hour, one minute to about one hour, 13 minutes, roughly. And so on my raw file, the sounds there on export, it goes missing. And I want to apologize, of course, for that. I don't know that there's really a tons of missing information in that section. But however, there is definitely some information about the second book and where he goes on. Um, I know that Keith lived in that house for four years. His first book highly focuses on the events and what happened and the investigation and I think the second book that he is putting out will go into a lot of the history around the area, perhaps a lot of native folklore and different. Um, it would be nice to have lots of different hauntings. I haven't uh, read the second book yet, but that information might have been lost in that 12 minutes. Strangely enough, I never said this while we were recording the podcast. But I did mention to it, it to Keith when we stopped recording. Is that towards the end, 
while we were doing the podcast. And this is going to sound crazy. And it's the first time that it's ever happened out of the couple of podcasts that I've run. But things started to go really weird in my house. Like I felt like somebody suddenly was in the room and all the hairs on the back of my neck started to stand up on end. And I didn't say anything and I just kept going with the recording because we had been recording for a while and it was near end. So I'm not sure if it coincides with that part or there's anything to do with that. I doubt it. But I just wanted, I thought, you know what, I'm going to give a little behind the scenes update and let people know that that is what happened, that it felt like somebody was in the room. It was only for a short while and then it went away. And when we were done recording the interview, I sort of let Keith know, hey, have you ever had this happen? Like where you were doing an interview with someone and strange things happened and he said yeah yeah strange things happen all the time I'm paraphrasing of course I can't remember the exact wordings that he used but however myself it was a very strange experience it was very odd to just feel that and I have no doubt that when you're dealing with this, um, sorry if that sound came through. People are messaging me while I'm recording this, guys. This is totally not edited, totally not pro. I apologize, but I wanted to, well, the first thing I wanted to do was uh, amend and apologize for that error on the end of the um, recording. But I thought it was really important for me to tell people what was going on in in the background um, while I was recording that interview. So it was bizarre. It was strange. I went on Twitter and I said, hey, Twitter people, you know, has anyone had paranormal things happening while they're recording a podcast? And of course, multiple people are like, oh, tech problems, you know, strange happenings. Yeah, we've had uh, like strange things happening in middle of interviews, especially for really intense cases. Um Definitely, it's out there and it happens. So what is that? um, What is that Nietzsche saying, guys? I know there's a term. I haven't discussed it much. I'm meandering on here. It's called psychic backlash. When you're investigating or involved with the paranormal. And the intensity or the level that you're going at it sort of attracts more of these phenomenons. So the quote is, of course, by Frederick Nietzsche. Whoever fights monsters should see to it that in the process he does not become a monster. And if you gaze long enough into the abyss, the abyss will gaze back into you. So you have to be careful and protective, of course, of yourself and have good, strong personal boundaries Because strange things can happen. And I just thought it was weird. Now, I mean, I've had technical problems before. And there could be a total rationally logical explanation um, with missing clips of audio. It happens when you're uploading files and you're trying to have it be the most efficient file and have it compact it so it uploads proper. Things could go funny on the internet. You You just don't know. I think it happened on the export and it happened again when I try to re-export it and um, I will of course always double check on my recordings after now because if that happens again I'll go in and clip out that that part. It's, it's unfortunate, it's annoying to have 12 minutes of the interview missing but of course I will go and look at that and not skip past that. Um, a lot of times after I've gone through the whole raw file and I know it's all nice and clean, I will play the file after I've exported it. And, you know, it sounds pretty good for the first 20 minutes or so. And I, have you know, listened to it probably about three or four times over in the raw file. And now, yeah, but I have to acknowledge that there could be some loss of memory on the export. It does. It does happen. So. I don't know how everybody's Halloween's going so far. It's October 5th today, and I wanted to have this up there for people to, you know, 
just to kind of discuss these behind the scenes. I was going to do a Facebook Live, but I have a lot of things I have to run out and get done today. I don't have time to have a discussion. So I thought, you know what, I'll do an actual update, upload it on the Podbean and let people know kind of some strange things that happened. They're saying we have a problem with audio. Hey guys, I, I don't know what the static is that you're hearing. I know I did have an issue before I started the stream up trying to get the audio up. Uh, it wasn't recognizing my audio and um, I was able to get the audio, the microphone recognized by the program, but I have no idea. I turned, uh, I checked the microphone um, it's the way I always use my live broadcast. There's no other microphones in with it. The camera microphone is off. Um, I, I never use the camera microphone, I, and I'm afraid to try it now. I could turn the, the big blue off and just have the microphone from the, um, from the camera, but I'm afraid you won't hear Keith. Um, um, I don't know what to do. I'm sorry. I'm streaming the way I always stream, and, and there's nothing I can do about it. I turned the audio down, way down, and I've moved the microphone away from... I use two computers. I've moved the microphone away from the laptop where Keith is talking from, and I don't know what else I can do. I'm sorry. Um, I can check one more thing if you guys want to hold on for a second. Hold on, Keith. Let me check one more thing, okay? Okay. But it's static. I, I don't know what it is. And if I static? Yeah, they're hearing static over the, over our talking and I don't know what it is. You're coming in clear. Um I I don't know what it is. I don't know if there's an issue with my uh, microphone. Maybe I need to get a new microphone. I don't know what it is. No, there's nothing wrong on your end. And I don't know the only thing it could can hear perfectly Noreen even with so tall cross you can hear me fine yeah I hear you fine you're crystal clear you come in and good huh I don't know guys the only thing I can do is um before the next show is do a check um I can do a uh, 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 just do a check on it and see what's going on I know last the last show something happened and it wasn't on our end, and we got knocked off. And there was nothing going on with my internet because I was still on. But yet, you, I was kicked off. Uh, we got uh, Joe Emmon on wanting to know why in 2013 all activity seemed to go quiet. But before we get to that, and we are just wrapping up here, trying to draw things to a close in the next few minutes, talking a little bit more about charnel ground, how uh, in concrete terms, it is an above ground site for the putrefaction, there's a, there's a $10 word, uh, of bodies, gen generally human, where formerly living tissue is left to decompose uncovered. On top of that, we find here, I think this is, um, and it's like a Buddhist uh, reference of sorts, the, the, probably the Vajrayana tradition out of Tibet is what I'm guessing. The charnel ground is a particular place that holds powerful teachings on impermanence and is important for slaying the ego. 
In this, the charnel ground shares with the tradition of dark retreat that was foregrounded in some Himalayan practice lineages. So, yeah, yes, indeed, charnel ground, uh, quite, quite something, quite fascinating. Of course, yeah, it's always good, important for us to reflect upon how we are really here, just passing through uh, such a, an impermanent state of existence as you know how, the way things are, and and supposedly, I guess, yeah, some spirits do get caught up in the. Uh, the bar, the bardo, I think, is what the Tibetans called it. I'm not sure what other w terms or ways of explaining things would be. But what are your thoughts as far as uh, that? Just what we've covered there, as well as why the uh, s the phenomenon subsided uh, over the course of 2013. All right, so I'm not sure if there's anything you think we've missed out on uh, as far as details or particulars, uh, you know, stemming from or that are applicable to this particular case, the Bothell Hell Ho House. But uh, we would like to thank you, of course, Keith, and, and uh, direct our audience, of course, to the show description area where we've added a few of your links. There's a couple more that have been uh, provided for the public here via the your links. There's a couple more that have been uh, provided for the public here via the restream chat so that's gone out over uh youtube and and uh d live uh 
what we're looking at there, though, mm, you have a Twitter account as well, too, don't you? Along with Facebook and, let's not forget, Demons in Seattle. So anything more you'd like to add to things? I just want to thank you for uh, letting me be here tonight. Wouldn't you know? Wouldn't you know? Don't ask me why, but uh, we we lost <laughs> that the the last few minutes there of you of you thanking us, of course, and just d directing the public to <laughs> the links that you, you know, people can follow. For some reason, the OBS just decided to to crap the bed here, unfortunately. So uh, yeah, my friend told. Yeah, I got a, a text message from my friends listening. Like, hey, everything went dead. <laughs> Incredible. I have no idea why that would be the case, but we're back now. It looks like so. Uh, yeah. Oh boy, I tell you. So maybe you know, Melissa is talking about. Is it? Uh, well, something to do with Scorpio. I'm not sure. It's not Saturn returning. I'm not much of an astrologer. with anything on your end at all have you no, Jeez, this is incredible i have no way of explaining this here frankly at all i wish i did and this is just uh-huh e your levels are just really uh mine as well too to some extent have uh have dropped out a little bit here let's just no i can't seem to there's only a limited number of of uh settings that we've got here too i could really i could turn your gain hang on a second here that was not the way to go i could uh <laughs> i could turn spirits, your spirits they're coming in <laughs> yeah what i'll do is i'll try to turn your gain up here oh geez this is already on see what this i happens. wonder if keith's around and if he could come in and see if his gains are or his <laughs> levels are good yeah you you're I, I boosted your gain oh did it come back hang on try it again uh, hello everybody it's melissa here Oh man, this is just something I really, I uh, have no explanation here. I guess a, a more qualified, uh, and uh, I hate to admit it, but professional technical engineer would have a, uh-huh, go ahead. O OBS can be a funny thing. I always had on and off issues with it. <laughs> That's just incredible. Uh, well, why don't you try reconnecting from your end then? We'll try that and I didn't see that part. Yeah, I was trying to take a picture of it, but it went away. I just heard a whistle. Somebody just whistled. I believe so. I think we might be in a, a spiritual limbo. Hey, this Emily, you're gonna get um good evidence as a result of replaying it later. 
Yes, I am. And for some reason, I can't hear Jay right now. I see him, but I can't hear him. Ask a question, but there's always these Sorry, I am so sorry. Yeah, Jay, you need to ask your question in a second. But- oh, you use the one F word. You know, a six, seven, eight, nine year old. But it's always out in the open. It's not somewhere that you would. Morning. The following program is solely in. I was going to ask a question, but there's always these Sorry, I am so sorry. Yeah, Jay, you need to ask your question in a second. Oh, you used the one F word. I was going to ask a question, but there's always these Sorry, I am so sorry. Yeah, Jay, you need to ask your question in a second. Oh, you used the one F word. You know, a six, seven, eight, nine year old. You know, a six, seven, eight, nine year old. Old, 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 old. The gray lady, uh, and 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 Uh, we have special guest Keith Linder. So I'm going to be coming in from New York. We got Dee from Texas, and we have Keith all the way from the state of Washington uh, to tell us his stories of what has been happening in his house. Poltergeist like like things happening. Uh, a lot of questions for him. And uh, hopefully, you guys have some questions as well that you'll be able to call in and speak with us. Um, tune into the Crossroads Radio Network. Uh, CrossroadsRadioNetwork.com or Mixler.com, Dparanormal, or Dparanormal.com will shoot you to the right spot to listen to us tonight. We are going to be live again in about 20 minutes. Uh, feel free to spread the word and tune in. Um, and tonight, I can't wait to speak with Mr. Linder. It's going to be a, an honor, and it's going to be really interesting, very, very interesting. So we will see you guys in about 20 minutes. Uh, D might be coming live so- shortly, so stay tuned to our page. And uh, I will talk to you guys soon. Thank you.